This is Umar for Box Nation. We're in Brooklyn, so I was on my flight here yesterday. Just bored on the flight. I go on to DAZN and your page. Proper boxing yeah. goes to you. Um, how does it feel like working for Frank Warren? I know. And you just staring at him. What, what was that all about I, with proper I, boxing? I just want to know is why is it only me where people are asking me to do bizarre things in interviews and they just expect me to do it? So, like, I don't know if you've seen, tune in, check it out, proper boxing with Josh Jamesy as well on the zone where they've got me with, what's it called? You know, with that, I've just posted it actually, you know, with that thing in my mouth. I've got to wear a I love proper boxing hat. The other hat I had to wear was Baz's boy. And like, they're just basically abusing me about hair transplants and like, everything. And I'm just like, no one else does this. You don't see like Al Heyman sitting down with fucking Umar from IFL getting abused. Sorry, oh, 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 Umar from Box Nation getting abused. Or, oh, Eddie, can you just wear this hat? Or do you mind if we take the piss out of you in, on camera for 20 minutes? So why do I have to do that? Why Is any other promoter like that? No. Do you know what, actually? Now that me and Frank, I've, now I've loosened Frank up a little bit, pardon the pun, but as in he's, he, he seems very chilled now, so maybe he'd be up for it. But I don't know, you have to ask Oscar if he if you do it, you know. Mm, and we'll see about like, that. Like, you know, like, oh, Eddie, uh, sorry, Oscar, can you do an impersonation or can you sing us a song, you know, like uh, you do with me? He would just go, what? So, Imagine going up to Bob Arum and saying, exactly. can you do this for me? But maybe that's one of my... But the whole Traitor. no context of the earned thing. Yeah, I suppose. Come that guy. I'm just here to be a performing seal for you all. Uh, let's talk about the shove. We mm -hmm. weren't here present um, at the Empire Tower. Obviously, we were dealing with the 5v5 stuff back home, which we'll come on to. But um, is he rattled? Oscar Delo, I reckon so. Devin's rattled. I think Devin's probably a bit pissed off or miffed by the whole build-up, really. Like... Ryan's done a great job, by the way. I mean, I, I don't think this is a, a ploy to promote the fight. I think he has actually, you know, I mean, his, his, his behaviour is certainly deviated from his usual behaviour. Um, I think Devin wants to do a job on him. And he's got to stay calm, you know, because I don't know where Ryan is at physically and mentally. I didn't think this fight was going to happen. We're two days away. This fight is happening and it's growing like a monster as we, as we draw closer. So Ryan's going to be dangerous in this fight because I don't think he's fighting. You know, the, the, the criticism of Ryan Garcia in the past is perhaps emotionally is a bit weak, you know, but I don't think he's going to be emotionally weak in the ring. I think because he's just past that. So he's going to fight with fire. He's going to be fast. He's going to be punching hard, but Devin's got to stay calm. But he mustn't make mistakes and, you know, expect the unexpected on Saturday night. Are we expecting Ryan Garcia to miss weight tomorrow? He looks heavy, but, you know, he's a 135 moving to 140. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him jump on the scales. Are you 100% confident this fight actually goes on on Saturday? Yeah, I am, for sure. Like, look, if this fight was going to get pulled, really... I'll be honest, after the first press conference, I wasn't so sure this fight was going to happen. If Ryan Garcia was your fighter and he was acting, well, the way he is, would you Impossible this? question because we don't know the truth. We don't, you know, until you sit down with a fighter, um, I'll say this, Umar, and it, you know, it's a very different situation because the behaviour was nowhere near as erratic. But when Scott Fitzgerald boxed Anthony Fowler, his behaviour started to change a little bit. And it was really, that was kind of the episode that he was just starting to go through. It was nothing like Ryan Garcia, but, you know, he was a lot more outspoken. He was on social media more, you know, in the head-to-head. -head, he was, you know, and he won that fight. In fact, I don't know if he would have won the fight if he would have behaved how he behaved previously. This is definitely not, in my opinion, a ploy, a promotional trick. This is just a guy that... I don't know. I don't know. But I do believe that this is going to be a tough fight for Devin Haney on Saturday night. Yeah. Give so, him... in answer to your question, yeah. the people who care about him will spend enough time to know the truth. Okay. So, if he is struggling mentally and emotionally, and he's not 100% physically, and he's not 100% mentally, then they should have pulled him out of the fight. But I don't believe with Oscar and Golden Boy, with Derek James, with the Garcia family, I would think that someone would pull him out of the fight if they didn't feel like he could win this fight on Saturday night. Clearly, Devin's a huge favourite, but even though Ryan might be in, in a really bad place, he's still going to be punching as Dangerous. Quick, Absolutely. As and, and, you know, again, going back to that mentality, maybe it'll help him on Saturday. Maybe he'll have no fear. Maybe he'll walk Devin down and let his hands go. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you're talking about having a fight. You're not talking about going and putting 
you know, an eight footer in the Masters, where you the mindset's got to be totally different. Or playing a game of Jenga. Yeah, you, well, I won that one. You you got to be, it's, it's beast mode in there, and I think you're going to get beast mode from Ryan Garcia. Okay. Uh, Devin looked drained to me yesterday. Mm. I didn't see him in person. I wasn't here, but he looked drained. Would you agree? Nah, listen, Devin's always tight at weight. He's ma I mean, listen, he used to make 135. How he did it, I'll never know. But he'll be fine at 140. It's not weight won't be a problem for Devin. Yeah, they're talking about if you know Devin comes through this, a potential tank fight, which is a huge fight in the US. But I'm guessing that would have to be at what 135. No, Could he get you'll never see Devin go back to 135 ever. You know, and listen. I He'll speak on his own behalf, but in my opinion, you'll never see Devin go back to 135. Okay, let's just go back to the 5v5, mm. which not even boxing fans in the UK are talking about, yeah. but it's gone into the casual market. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I've never seen a response like this for a concept, and the 5v5 is going to be a concept that grows and grows and grows in multiple territories. And it just shows you that when you build the narrative and the job that His Excellency's done on the promo and just like and, and the way the fighters have embraced it, Umar, as well. You know, like guys that aren't used to that kind of exposure and publicity. It's so refreshing to see. And as I told you before, Bivol Betabiev and the 5v5 is the best card, the best night of boxing I've ever seen. And it's just the, the start, just the beginning. Like this sport is in such a great place at the moment. You know, we're doing major shows every week all around the world. And the plans that are coming and the plans that are in place are just so exciting and um, never been more motivated, never been more excited, and uh, yeah, I can't wait. Have you and Frank Warren agreed on a, a forfeit bet, like a purse? No, you know it, don't you? I mean, the, the forfeit bet, forget money. Frank Smith goes into the HQ of Queensbury in a, as a maid and serves coffee to the entire staff at Queensbury all day. And when we win, Andy Aylin <laughs> will have to dress up as a butler and come into the Matrim HQ and serve everybody coffee all day. That is more, you know, that's, that's, seven, that's a seven-figure bet you're talking about there. We don't need the money. This is pride. And uh, that is going to be filmed as well and documented. So this actually would happen? It's yeah? happening. Oh, wow. It's all, it's all been agreed. So that is happening. That is done. And um, that, work, that means more than anything. But, you know, this is a rivalry, although it's friendly now, with both desperate to win. But it's not just us, Umar. It's the entire company, right? It's George, it's Francis, it's Andy, it's Emma. You know, it's all that guys from their side and from our side. You know, it's Sean, it's it's Ross, it's even Kai. You know, it's like it's the entire Matrim team. We want to win, and it's going to be massive, absolutely huge. Andy Allen back in Matrim's offices. I know. Incredible. That's if you win, of course. When? <laughs> Let's get some reaction to comments from the Queensbury guys. So Hamza Shiraz, mm. kind of in a polite way, because he's a very respectful guy, but. He said that you did an interview a while back, um, kind of dismissed him. He mm. said when he beats Amma Williams, he's going to come over to you, shake your hand, and you won't forget him. I won't forget him now. I like, I like Hamza. Um, I like a lot of the guys on the Queensbury team. You know, I mean, I know when Dev, you know, accidentally told the world that it was Nick Ball yeah, under that. that. Wasn't yeah, your fault. No, it was just Dev's fault, you know. Um, but Hamza is a very respectful, uh, very well presented young man, good fighter. Just think it's a 50 50 fight with Ammo Williams, and I fancy Ammo Williams to knock him out. I really do, but it's a very tough fight for Ammo as well. Um, Nick Ball, love Nick Ball. I just think Ray Ford's the best 126 pounder in the world. Actually, I really like Daniel Dubois as well. I think he's hilarious. Can you tell people what he said in the round table? Uh, he said, I'm going to put this CUNT to sleep on Saturday. I'm not sure whether it will make the, the edit. But it was a brilliant round. He, him and Hergovic were going at it. It's a great fight. So many great fights. Really good bunch of lads all round, honestly. Eddie, I don't know if you can say much on this. Obviously, reports have come out that you guys are potentially staging a fight with Terence Crawford and Israel Madrimov in LA under His Excellency's banner. Get a comment on that? Yeah, no, look, there, there's so many conversations going around. That's not true as we stand here today. Um, look, Terence Crawford... Is chasing the 154 pound world champions. Israel Madrimov is a 154 pound world champion. Nothing's agreed. Um, but at some point, listen, we would love that fight because I want Madrimov to face the best and we'll see what happens. We know His Excellency has openly spoke about coming to Wembley, and, but if he you know, made a play in America, I think that'd be great for boxing. Yeah, we'll see. Look, His Excellency is a huge fight fan, you know, and um, he has a massive passion for the sport. It's very infectious, it's very exciting. See a lot of stuff that gets reported, some of it's true, some of it's not. 
but you know the future looks extremely bright and we'll see what happens. Last one, Devin Haney v Ryan Garcia, final prediction. Devin Haney by stoppage between rounds eight and ten. Okay, Eddie Earn, thank you very much. Cheers.